I'm on a journey to get better, and I want to do it with you. And I'm not just focusing on physical health. I'm focusing on everything, emotional wellness, spirituality, finances, relationships, and so much more. Every week, it will be my personal goal to bring us, the world's leading healers, experts, and game changers, to share groundbreaking secrets and tips to getting better in all areas of life. Getting better isn't easy, but it's a whole lot easier when we can do it together. Welcome to Better Together with me, Maria Menounos. <laughs> Welcome back to Better Together. When you know better, you get better. It is Thursday, March 26th. Our quote of the day, our greatest happiness doesn't depend on the condition of life in which chance has placed us but is always the result of good conscience and good health. And that was from Thomas Jefferson. And I was chuckling at the top of the show because we have our friend and guest on the show, Mr. Harley Pasternak, who is on the line ready for when we are ready to talk. And he was holding his phone. And I don't know if he was being fresh with me holding it down by his butt as he was walking or if it was just happened to be down there, but it definitely made me laugh. Um, and this is a time when we all need to laugh because things are getting crazy. A little bit crazy. A little bit crazy. We, um, you know, saying earlier, I, I took a little bit of a break from the news the last couple of days and I started to feel better and I started to feel kind of like, okay, I think we're going to be all right. I think things are going to be not as bad as I was thinking and, and projecting. And then I don't know if it was seeing the Elmhurst hospital situation in Queens, New York, and hearing a doctor say it's like the apocalypse and they're bringing in freezer trucks for the, the, the dead bodies. Or if it was, you know, the fact that 3.3 million people filed for unemployment, this week, or if it was, you know, the fact that, you know, even this morning you were saying our mayor Garcetti said, we're going to be on lockdown for at least another two months, which I have been saying, and I've known would be the case, but it's, uh, it's only just begun and it's, and it's real. And it's, it's so, so frightening. My best friend works for United Airlines. I was talking to her this morning and, you know, they've canceled most flights. There's like very, very few flights left. Yeah. Um, you know, if a normal route to Florida was 10 flights a day, it's only one now. Um, and who knows how long that's going to even last. Well, it's interesting because you see that's going on. Plus, we got the uh, in, in lighter news. They did pass the two trillion dollar stimulus package for the economy, which will have long lasting effects after this whole thing. But for now, uh they are boosting a hundred billion dollars to the hospital industry. Um, they're boosting a lot of. We've finally approved car companies to start manufacturing uh, ventilators, so that's good. Mm -hmm. um, it's also bailing out the uh, the airline companies, so that's why we're seeing airline stocks rising again today. But I don't see that staying on course for a long time. Um, and then we also have the fund for people who are going to be getting checks so people who are making who made under seventy five thousand dollars for the last year will make will get uh twelve hundred dollars for individuals and uh five hundred for each child that they have uh twenty four hundred for married couples of course and then it goes down by five dollars for every hundred for every hundred or thousand dollars after seventy five thousand that you make mm -hmm. so at least at least at the very least in this time of craziness the government has made some strides in working together towards at least something. And that's, that's good. Yeah. I, you know, it's, it's, I was reading some stuff yesterday about, um, you know, our intelligence agencies knowing about this and trying to warn our leaders that this was coming and, and people disregarding that, um, because of, you know, economic concerns and, you know, obviously we know China didn't let us know early enough. It's just, it it's so frightening to see the repercussions of non-action or, or, you know, a different choice, let's say, right? Protecting the economy and hoping for, you know, hoping this was going to be nothing. It's really just I mean, starting to kind of... Have you seen, did you watch Chernobyl? Yes. So Chernobyl has a lot of the same things in that story that 
went on with what's going on now, mm-hmm. right? And when you have a when you have Good a government, I forgot about that. When you have a government that is kind of doesn't want responsibility for anything, like I'm sorry, but communist political parties are very much like that. Um, this is what you get, and this is really it's really sad. But it's everyone's passing the blame. Everyone's saying no, there's no problem. In December, a doctor died of coronavirus in China. Doctor Ling. And it was he was told to shut up while he was telling people about it. Like yeah. pe- several doctors were telling people about this and trying to tell it, and the Chinese government shut them up. Yeah. And now they're now they're of course they're dead from it. It's 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 like it's really difficult to live in a world where a lot of people are trying to cover up things as opposed to raise awareness and handle it. Yeah. There was another article I read about um, CEOs, like major CEOs who were asked like a year ago what they feared most. And they said a pandemic that starts in China. And so I'm like, how did they know a year ago that that could potentially be something to be looking at and that they started preparing for things like that? Um, Well, I think that it's a, it's a standard fear to have regardless of this, because People don't realize how much of our industry is run by China in terms of it's it's cheap labor. And that's why all these CEOs and these major, major corporations outsource to China is mm-hmm. because you have factories full of thousands and thousands of people working for less than living wages doing the work. And that's why they outsource. That's why Apple has all their factories in China is because yeah. they outsource the work and then up price it like 15,000 percent over here. Um, but if a CEO who has any business over there is fearful of anything, it's anything that takes out that workforce. Totally. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. It's, it's guys, I'm so scared, but, um, I am going to continue. Sorry, not trying to get bleak here. No, I'm telling you, I, I'm, I'm getting, I'm getting bleak again and I'm getting bleak again because I just, I don't see a clear end and I see, I see people trying now, and it's almost like God. Like humanity perseveres, and I really think that you know, right now we have. I don't think we even understand the number of labs out there that are dedicating most a lot of their resources to uh, researching and finding some kind of vaccine. And a lot of people are criticizing because a lot of companies are looking into it for a monetary gain. Because the places that are, of course, making money off of this are the healthcare companies and the insurance companies. Mm-hmm. But regardless of that, money, we need it no matter what. Yeah, money is an influence no matter what. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So everyone's going to want to make money. That's just how it is. Just let them make a vaccine, yeah, even yeah, if yeah. it's monetarily, you know. Well, I um, I think that in the end, it all works out. But I, I just see like a a bleaker weight than we've ever had to get to that end. And I think it's going to turn a lot of things upside down. Um, I think it's going to turn a lot of things upside down and, and for the better in, in some ways, as we've talked about on the show. So um, I think we might need another session with John Edward, (laughs) but uh, if you haven't listened to it, it was a great episode we just did recently. Um, In the meantime, I watched uh, the trial of Gabriel Fernandez last night. Have you heard about this? Is this the one with the boy? Yep. Oh, I, yeah, it's really sad. Somebody told me about it. It's horrible. We got we only got through the first episode. Um, but uh, if you want viewing, obviously, right now it's Joe Exotic. Is that what the name of it is? No, no it's the Tiger called King. Tiger King. The Tiger King. Don't F with cats which you have to turn away a lot. My name is Lucas Magnata. Hello. But it was pretty unbelievable. Oh, God. Um, and then the trial of Gabriel Fernandez, um, I think, is uh, is r- riveting and just horrifying. Horrifying. But, you know, not really, like, a lot of positive stuff there to watch. But, you know, we always have friends we can rely on if we need a, a Ozark good laugh. Ozark Season 3 comes out tomorrow. Does it really? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, so that's that's I'm cool. That's a fun that. one. Yeah, won't get down on. If Caribbean you enthusiasm has actually been really amazing this season too. Oh my God, Larry David's the best. Really amazing. All right, well, there you have it. Um, life is is what it is. I'm curious to hear from Harley to see his take on it. But um, if you don't know Harley, 
he is a major reason for all of the beautiful bodies you see in Hollywood. He has a Rolodex of clients that include Ariana Grande, Katy Perry, so many more. Um, he's more than a celebrity trainer. He's a lifestyle and nutrition coach. He takes great pride in what he does, and he's written many, many uh, New York Times bestselling books, the Five Factor series, uh, The World Diet, and so much more. And so today we decided we would have him on the show to help us figure out how to stay fit and healthy. I'm getting a lot of those memes that are like, when the quarantine is over, and it's like a, a giraffe that looks like an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> right. And so um, I think uh, I think we all need as many tips in this area as we can get. And uh, who better than Harley to give them to us? So Harley, are you able to hear me? I can hear you perfectly. Can you hear me? I can. Did you strategically set that shot up to make me laugh this morning? No, no, but I heard you say that after the fact. I, 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 I was my, getting my... a ball shot and a butt shot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's all about ratings. If I can help you get ratings. Yeah, I was dying laughing. I'm like, he's totally doing this to mess with me right now. <laughs> That's funny. So Harley, how are you doing in this uh, in this crisis? You know, uh, surprisingly well. I um, I've got a four and a six year old, and so we are homeschooling them, which is uh, is a new experience. I've never spent as much time one on one time with my kids, and I kind of love it. Um, I post sometimes some of the workouts I do with the kids. They do phys ed time with me, and oh. we do these these obstacle courses and soccer games and we it just it's so you're doing the blast. fun stuff and your wife jessica is having to do the the math and the science i bet exactly we just had that talk she said when am i <laughs> going to do the phys ed and you do the math and and grammar and all the other stuff so, <laughs> um so that's been good i've been uh virtually training my clients uh over facetime mm -hmm. so that that's been good and um my gym design business, you know, we do all the Four Seasons hotels around the world. My office is actually in the North Pole. I know it sounds funny, but uh, we are in northern Canada and there is no coronavirus there. And my team is still working diligently. Um, and then Sweet Kick, which we'll talk about later, has been on fire because people are stress eating and they're at home with their pastries and cakes and sugary cereals. And it's uh, it's been busy. Yeah. Funny enough. So... Harley and I have been friends for years and our mutual, very dear friend had a birthday party. So we go to her birthday party. I'm about to drink a margarita. I'm really excited because I love Casamigos margaritas. And he's like, hold on, hold on. I got to give you something. He's like, just trust me, take it. And I would never take a pill from anybody in the world. Okay. <laughs> ever. If they like, here, take this and trust me. It just never would happen, but it's Harley. And he was like, Maria, trust me. It's not, it's not anything bad. Just trust me. Just take it. And I was like, I'm sitting there with Kevin. I'm like, all right, fine. I take it. And it like, I had to wait. A, what was it? A minute? Oh, we lost. Yeah, just it's yeah. it, it just a breath mint. So as soon as the breath mint was dissolved, probably two minutes. Yeah. Okay, so you told me to wait two minutes. He's like, and now take a drink of your margarita. And I tasted my margarita, and it was so disgusting because these sweet kicks basically, you know, turn off your receptors to liking sugar, right? Yeah, exactly. It's a it's a breath mint, um, and for up to two hours after you have it, you're unable to taste sugar you're unable to enjoy sugar, you're, you're not going to want to finish it. And your brain doesn't get that message that we get when we eat sugar, that chemical reaction that we get from love or sex. Uh, um, so we lose that desire to want to have sugar after the fact. So it, it's, it's been pretty great. Yeah. So, so Harley drugged me and made me hate margaritas <laughs> at my best friend's birthday party. <laughs> I was like, I was so looking forward to having a margarita. You freaked me up like this is so bad um but yeah it actually really worked so um so that is uh, that is actually a great tip during this quarantine is getting some of those sweet cake breath mints um and, and and people are getting it today you know the sugar from things that we used to consider healthy so i went to the grocery store the other day and they had a maximum one cereal and one granola bar thing at the grocery store mm -hmm. and those are two of the highest sources of sugar you can get juice uh, barbecue sauce, ketchup, these things that we don't think about. We think about desserts and cakes, but if you can get someone to kick sugar 
or even reduce their sugar intake by half. You don't have to kick it all together. You could, you know, someone would, would could lose 20, 30 pounds a year. You can change someone's diabetic profile. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, you know very well, we have 35 million mm-hmm. diabetics in the U.S. and 120 million pre-diabetics. So yeah. it can help people. I teeter into that pre-diabetic mode. I have to be so careful. Yeah, you should have picked your, your parents more carefully. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, Harley... Um, it sounds like you are thriving the times, but are you afraid at all? Are you afraid of how this is going to change your business? Um, and, and by the way, could it change it for the better? Like, will it become something where now clients won't have to come to you and you can just do it all from your private homes? I think that to every challenge in life, there's opportunities. And too many of us are focusing on the challenges and not the opportunities. And it's easy for me to say, because I've set my life up in a certain way over many years, if you're a waiter at a restaurant, you're probably not going to be as optimistic right now because there is no work for you right now. But I think maybe that waiter didn't always want to be a waiter. Maybe they became a waiter because the thing they really wanted to do, they didn't do yet. So maybe this is for some people, Mm -hmm. not for everyone, for some people, maybe this is the Okay, reflection on life. The thing I was doing to pay the bills for the X amount of time is not there right now. It'll come back. But in the period between now and when it comes back, how can I give myself a new set of skills, tools, focus, and decide not what am I going to do when I come back? What do I want to do when I come back? I like that. That We've talked about that a lot um, throughout the last two weeks is winning the weight um, and, and making good use of the time. And also, you know, thinking about the positives that are coming out of this, right? You talked about your family and getting time with your kids that you'd never gotten before. I've been making lists and lists and lists of positives so that I can not focus on the negatives and the fears. Um, you know, it's natural where they're going to come up, but then if we can just shift quickly over to, okay, here are all the positives that are coming from this. Um, do you think this will change your business? I think it, it already has. And I think I'm hoping certain elements of that stay, um, like, like the virtual training, uh, you know, it's, it's something that I dabbled with in the last couple of years. I have clients that live outside of the country. But now I have people, clients who live in LA, they just live an hour drive from me each way. Mm-hmm. And what a great way for us to stay connected when they're unable to, to come to see me and vice versa. I think, um, I think there's too many, I think this is going to hurt social media influencers, which is music to my ears. <laughs> my industry <laughs> has been diluted and, and um, minimized over the last five years because there are more quote unquote celebrity trainers on Instagram than there are celebrities and there are more fitness gurus. Um, and most of these people can't spell the word fitness and they're suffering right now because they're not getting endorsements to plug about diet tea and all these ridiculous things. So I think maybe this will, um, clear away some of the pretend health advisors and, and maybe people will turn to more trusted sources of information during times like this. Um, maybe that might be a good thing. You know, we might be more picky about where we get our information about health. Um, I'm hoping that's something else that happens. Mm-hmm. Maybe. Yeah. Um, I think how people grocery shop will be different. More and more people will do online grocery shopping when this is done, which yeah. I think is great when people talk about trying to eat healthy, they'll eat at home more. Eating at home is mm-hmm. so essential to being healthier and eating out less often. I think some good things will come from this. And I, I'm from Canada and I, I lived through the SARS. We had SARS really bad in Toronto. Toronto was uh, the hot spot of SARS outside of China. Was it really? So I went through this. Yeah, my family was quarantined. So this is very, kind of familiar to me. How long I'm were not, you guys quarantined I, for? So I wasn't. My brother was... Um, my best friend was, he was a doctor. My dad was on the plane that came back and brought SARS to Canada. No way. So, um, yeah, so there was, there was uh, two week quarantines then. Um, in fact, I think my, my friend was quarantined for a month. Um, but the difference with SARS, 
which is good and bad, is SARS killed a lot more people. And so what's bad about that is it killed a lot more people. What's good about that is it when you quicker. kill the host, the host can infect other people. Yeah. So I saw SARS. SARS was, if you got SARS, you were scared for your life. Like really, 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 really. This is this is obviously scary for different reasons, but to healthy people that are not elderly, you're probably going to be fine. Mm -hmm. Probably going to be fine. Yeah, you hear these horror stories of a 38-year-old and a 29-year-old and they exist, but that's like a 0.0, you know, that's a very small thing. SARS was for real. SARS killed 20% of the people, I think, that got it. Wow. And I could be making the number up, but I, I'm pretty sure that was the number, maybe 20 or 10%. It, it killed a lot of people per people that got it. So I'm not as scared. Um, I respect it. I, you know, with social distancing, we're, we're locked down. I go from my house to my office and back and forth, but no one's allowed in my office. So um, we're going to get through this. This is not Ebola. This is not, you know, some of the more deadly things we had. I believe H1N1 was a lot more dangerous from what I remember. We're going to get through this and we're going to look back and we're going to say, okay, what were some of the things we did during that time that we should keep doing? Mm -hmm. I haven't shaken someone's hand in five years. Really? Um, yeah, because when you got little kids, they're always bringing home colds, always, always, always. And I feel like it's not fair for me to shake someone else's hand because one third of the year I have a cold. That's just the fact. And it's not fair to other people. So I just fist bump people or and or hug people. And um, and I think people are going to do a lot more of that when this is done. Yeah, I know. I have Steven in the booth. It's <laughs> we talk through the window and the doors are closed. I have my own door over here. Like we were able to do this because I have this studio and the way it's set up. But the same thing, we've been quarantining and I don't even hug my parents, which my mom has been getting really sad about. But I said, mom, I'm like, I still have been, I had to go pick up something a couple days ago. Um, it was medication and it came to um, our PO box. And I was like, I have to go get it now. Did I see anybody? Did I touch anybody? Was I near? Any no, but still. And I was like, I have to be careful. I could be carrying it and not know. Most people could be carrying it and not know because you can be asymptomatic. So even in our home, we're six feet apart. Kevin, <laughs> he's like, when do I get hugged? I'm like, I don't know. You're the one who goes out foraging. You're in the grocery stores. I can't trust. Right. I'm like six feet away, baby. <laughs> yeah. I, by the way, I, I same thing. Cause I have gone to the grocery stores. I keep my wife who I love so much. I want to hug very much. I, I hug her from behind and, <laughs> and we haven't really kissed in a week. Yeah. And same we here. We air kiss and, yep. and, it, and I just, yeah. So, um, but, but again, I, I look at the opportunities, you know, the people, I, I think that the, our society needed a reset more than ever. What our priorities are, the millennials, social media, no one's present. People's priorities are so weird. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden people are forced to spend time by themselves and people are, forced to spend time with their family and they're forced to be more present and think about important things and cook meals at home and all these things that I think we needed so badly. And I hope people, not too many people die. I hope if anyone dies, it's sad, but maybe a lot of good comes out of this. Maybe we yeah. end up happier and with better priorities and maybe healthier. We take our health more seriously. Do you know how few people wash their hands multiple times a day yeah. prior to this? That's gross. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe, no, but at the very least, maybe that's this gross. That's a great drop. <laughs> will create a set of habits that will save us from an even more dangerous virus in the future because, uh -huh. oh, people are used to washing their hands now and that'll help us from the next thing. I 100% right believe that. It's something like 5% of Americans wash their hands every time after they go to the bathroom with soap and water. What? So 95% don't. Oh, yeah. Some crazy stat. Yeah. That's gross. So I think a lot of good is going to come out of this. And I'm going to focus on that because that's what I have control over. And let's not worry about what we don't have control over. Just do you. You do, you, you do what you can. See. And one other thing I'll add is the if good you know reset. any elderly, any elderly, you have to take care of them right now. Yeah. So there's two people on my street. One's 103 and one is 91. We've been bringing them groceries every other day. Aww. We spray them down. But just if anybody hears this and you know an elderly person on your block or in your neighborhood or in your city, reach out to them, see if they need anything at all. Yeah, this is this is the time to help everybody. So Harley, 
in speaking about helping everybody, how can we help our listeners and our viewers here today get fit, stay fit, not turn into, you know, large humans or larger sure. humans. I, I'm saying like, I keep getting these memes where it's like the zebra or the, the giraffe turns into the elephant. They're like, when this quarantine is over and I'm like, oh my God, me too. You know, last night we made an apple crumb pie <laughs> and I was like, I can't help myself. The other day I'm having peanut M&Ms. Like it's terrible. How so, do we. So let, let, let's go back to that. I, I celebrate your apple crumb pie because it was part of a ceremony and a process and a passion. I don't celebrate the M&Ms because it just came out of a package and it's a part of stress eating. So, it, you know, that's how I differentiate people like, I just need something to get through these times. You want to bake as a family. I like that you guys baked that. That was awesome. But you baked it. It was special. You remember, remember we baked that apple crumble pie together? Yep. So if there's one thing and you guys want to, you know, be decadent, anybody out there, be decadent for something you created and you prepared um, rather than just something you tore open the top and just knocked back. Yeah. I like that. Okay. So, so creating daily habits, to, you know, to keep structure, purpose every single day. Um, I sit ahead of a daily step goal that you know about that mm -hmm. uh, all my clients have. It's 12,000 steps a day. If you have a Fitbit, great. If not, use what you can and, and move your body and, um, we don't have martial law yet. I hope we don't. You can still go out and walk. There's enough open space that you can walk without being six feet into somebody. Um, that's the first thing. The second thing is set an alarm clock. Don't sleep in until noon every day. You know, if you don't have to go to work, get up, have a purpose, have a function, cook breakfast, lunch, and dinner, prepare your snacks. Um, and then every day on Instagram, I've been posting these twofers, these two moves a day. And You've got something to do every day to strengthen, tone, and tighten your body. Um, I spoke to the Fitbit team two days ago, and they agreed to give a free three-month Fitbit premium membership to anybody who doesn't have it. So that's 150 workouts. It's, it's everything you need to stay fit in the meantime, and that's free. Um, you don't have to pay to, to be in great shape right now. A lot of people are taking advantage, and they're selling subscriptions and products you don't need any of those to walk you don't need those to to, to be healthy and cook healthy um, and you can get a lot of free content to stay in shape i like the fitbit idea i had totally forgotten about that um i i recently got a peloton for christmas and so i'm kind of obsessed with that but i realize i'm definitely not getting ten thousand steps a day ask, or twelve ask 000. me my two ask me my two cents on peloton I don't want to, cause I have a bad feeling. I thought about you this morning. I was like, I wonder what he's going to say about Peloton. <laughs> okay. Go for it. We spend too much of our lives sitting for people's one bout of exercise daily to be a bike where again, we're not weight bearing. We're not standing upright. You're strengthening muscles that are already over in the body. You're all quads and calves. Your posture slouched. Um, you know, you have a lot of people who are who spin regularly, who had hip surgeries. I have two well-known clients who had to have hip surgery from spinning. Wow. Um, I have the treadmill. You went, oh, a treadmill. A treadmill's better. Yeah, treadmill's yeah, yeah. I can't, yeah. I can't commit. That, that is such an awkward position on that Peloton yeah. bike. Um, and it's not just the Peloton. It's any bike. I mean, Soul Cycle. I loved. I did it once, you know, here and there. And for a once here and there experience, it was fine. But there's yeah. no way that that feels good on my body. And what you loved about Soul Cycle was not the bike per se. It no. was the energy. It and was the, the music. It was yeah. the, the crowd. It was yeah. So that's like going to to church, right? You know, people don't go to organized pray places of worship as much anymore. And group fitness has replaced a lot of that, a place where you have group energy, community, positivity. And that's what group fitness really has replaced in a, in a, a, for the most part. Um, yeah. But, but look, everyone needs these daily habits. You need a daily step goal. You need a daily sleep goal. Yep. You need uh, meals uh, that you should be having, three meals and two snacks a day. Um, there's all these things we need to create purpose and structure throughout our days. And then next thing you know, you're like, wow, it's nine at night. It's time to go to bed. What did I do today? I feel like I was busy all day. And I think that's a really important thing for us to have now. And just say no to sugar. 
minimize your sugar intake because I think we're going to be, we're going to get through this. The coronavirus will be gone. And when we're done, I think that people are going to be heavier. They're going to, we're going to have more diabetics than we have in the U S we're going to have more heart disease. More people will die as a byproduct of the lifestyle created by the quarantine than from the virus itself. I agree. I, I would agree that that is definitely a possibility because we're all at home and, you know, a lot of people are stress eaters and, and if you're bored and you're not filling your time and you're sitting in front of your cupboards and you're seeing that there's options there, um, yeah, it's, it's not easy. I mean, I dug into a bag of Fritos the other night because Kevin grabbed the bag of Fritos. I wasn't going to go get the bag of Fritos. I know they're there. Right. I had self-control right. to a degree, but then once he brought them out, I'm munching and I'm munching. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. So, you, you know, we, what we went talked about before is don't snack on packaged treats now. So no chips, no M&Ms, things like that. If you want to create something that's indulgent and you want to celebrate it and make it a moment, do it. Do it. I'm all about it. No one has to have no fun in their food, but you make the fun. Let's yeah. not do a shortcut, especially now than ever. I like that. Um, what uh, else can so you I do? Think... So you on your Instagram at Harley Pasternak, you have a twofer every day? Every day I've been putting two exercises to do that don't require any equipment. If you go back for the last two weeks, you can take a look at them and, and catch up. Um, simple moves, and you go back and forth between these two moves. We focus on different body parts each day of the week. It doesn't cost anything. Um, and I think people need that now. People need to help each other. Mm -hmm. Now is the last, I've been, I've had 20 emails in my inbox from these content companies who want me to do this prescription based thing right now. This is the great time to, to hit you. Have everyone's undivided attention. We'll charge $99 a month. We'll get thousands of people. And I just thought, this is not the time to take advantage of people's, you, you know, desire to be active. I think if anything, now is when we should give every bit of content we can to people and create goodwill and just help people get through this because we're all in the exact same thing together. There's even countries that are at war that all of a sudden now have put the war on hold hmm. and are now working together to control the spread of the virus. I'm reading these articles of what's happening in Israel. I'm reading these articles of what's happening in Ireland. It doesn't matter what your political beliefs are, your religious beliefs. All of us are facing the same challenge now. Yeah. And it's kind of beautiful how it's bringing us together. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I love that. What about um, eating right now where, you know, it's harder than ever to find, you know, what you need. There are limitations. Like I normally used to make kale chips at home, right? Yeah. I'm not going to be able to find enough kale to really make a lot of kale chips and stuff. So what, um, what can people do dietarily with what they have? Like, is there a way to make canned goods? Healthy? Yeah, absolutely. I've been saying this for years prior to this is that frozen and canned foods are at least as nutritiously dense as their fresh versions and usually more nutritionally nutritiously dense than the fresh ones and i'll really? tell you why when you buy uh spinach or broccoli it it wasn't picked that morning right it was picked i don't know how many weeks ago it was sent to the farm thing where they the co-op and then it goes from there to the distributor and it goes from there to the grocery store in the back and then they put it out and then it sits out there and people sift through it and it's exposed to light and air and contact and you buy it and you bring it home and it sits at home for a few days and then you eat it. So how many hands has it touched? How much air and light has it been exposed to? And how old is it? Whereas when you buy frozen broccoli, the second it's picked, it's flash frozen. It's in an airtight bag, opaque. When you open it, that thing really is a couple hours old. Wow, I never thought of that. And, and right now we're concerned about exposure to virus. Well, the broccoli has not been exposed to anybody sneezing on it. It's, it's well packaged away. So Frozen and canned, I'm a massive fan of. Stock up on them, not more than you need. And um, and those are great things to always have around. I, I never knew that. Stephen, did you know that about frozen stuff? I mean, the logic makes sense. Yeah. Sushi, right? People say never buy sushi on Sundays because they don't do deliveries on Sundays. And so that is such a load of, you know, every bit of sushi you eat was previously frozen. 
Really? And they free yeah, all of it. When they when they catch tuna, these massive ships go out into the ocean for months at a time. Then they everything they catch, they clean and freeze. So when they bring it back to the auctions at the Tsujiki fish market in Tokyo, that tuna wasn't caught that morning. That could have been caught two months ago. And when you freeze fish, it kills the parasites in them. So you have to freeze them. Oh. And then on top of that, it creates the proper consistency for sushi. So once you thaw out frozen fish, it cuts easier. So don't be scared of frozen. Most of the good things in this world were frozen. You're just buying them thawed out. Wow. Okay. And and with like canned goods, I was thinking with beans and stuff, if you just rinse them really well, you can get a lot of the preservatives off, right? How about this? There are zero preservatives in canned foods. What? Canning is the preservative. I did not know that you don't either. Need, there is zero preservatives in canned foods. Across so the example, board? Across the board. Because the canning process is how you preserve things. We've been canning food for hundreds of years. Long before we knew what a chemical was. No way. So This is why yeah, I love Harley. He knows everything. <laughs> there's, no, there's no preservatives. For example, canned tuna. This is great. Those massive ships that go out for months at a time, when they catch tuna, you're not going to believe what they do. They clean it. They skin it. They, they cut it into sections, put a raw piece of tuna in a can with a little bit of water, seal it, and they steam the can on the ship. Shut up. So that raw tuna cooks in the can. And by the time that, that, that uh, uh, tuna ship gets to shore, it already has boxes of canned tuna that are already cooked, already sealed, and ready to go to the distributor. Wow. I had no idea. So, and canned tomatoes are actually much healthier than fresh tomatoes because something about the canning process increases the lycopenes in the tomatoes. So tomato sauce in a can and canned tomatoes are higher in the good stuff than fresh tomatoes. I've never heard of any of this. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Meanwhile, for anybody who's listening and not watching, Harley has been pacing around his property nonstop trying to get his steps. How many steps are you at right now? Uh, let's see. <laughs> it's 1140 AM. I'm at, uh, tap, tap, 5,000. I'm at 7,800. 7,800. Damn. You're almost there. And I've been sitting in my desk doing virtual training most of the day. So, By the time yeah. we're finished with this call, you'll be at 10,000. <laughs> That'd be great, right? So what other tips do you have for people? And do you, do you share recipes on your Instagram as well? Yeah. Every day I've been putting up a meal with a recipe and they're all so simple. Um, any of you who've, who've read any of my books before, you know, I have this mm -hmm. rule that all my recipes have to be five minutes or less to prepare with five ingredients or less. And the first book was 20 years ago, five factor fitness. I realized then, you know, I was cooking things for Halle Berry in a trailer on set and I didn't have a full kitchen and I didn't have a full pantry and I had to you do limited things. Uh, I did do a lot of things with limited ingredients. And so ever since then, I really believe that if you make a recipe simple, then people are more likely to use it. And, yeah. um, and so, and on top of that, um, if you're a smoothie person, body reset diet, uh, strangely enough, became a number one bestseller for its fifth time last month. No way. So it, it's almost 10 years old. You you wrote a blurb for it, actually. Of course. It was um, amazing. I've used it so much. So and so what's exciting is during this time, my publishers have asked me to write an updated 2021 version of the book. Uh huh. Um, so it'll have new recipes and it'll have a chapter on low sugar. And so, yeah, making the most of this time. I love it. I, um... I uh, remember taking the 10 day smoothie challenge and thinking, oh, I can't, I can't just do smoothies. And like, no, there's food too. And remember how yeah. cut I got for the cover of men's fitness. Hell yeah. I was of like sick I 10 days of that. And I ate and I was like, damn, that was pretty awesome. Um, I remember that for the weirdest reason, because we did a shoot for that, for your uh, thing. And there was a picture where they took of us where there was a palm tree behind us and it looks like my hair. So I, have none. <laughs> so I just remember that was the last picture I have where it looks like I have this beautiful head 
of hair, but really it's just a palm tree behind me. Amazing. I have to go back and look at that. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, no, I think, um, you know, we've been, it's, it's, it has been so cool. I've been home cooking and, you know, I, I've grown up, my mom, you know, my grandfather was a chef. My mom was a cook at a school cafeteria. I did that book with her, The Over Girl's Guide to Cooking. And we believe the same thing. It should be simple. It should be fast. It should be easy. And, um, and so I've been, you know, creating new little things on the, on the, on the fly. I'm like, okay, here's some frozen shrimp, Steven, we can get rid of my men's cover. Thank you. My men's fitness cover, Steven put it up. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm making like, you know, spicy shrimp and, you know, all kinds of different things. And we planted food in the garden before they, um, closed all non-essential businesses, we got more and more and more um, things for the garden so that we can have fresh stuff as well because I, I really need my fresh salad. I love salad. Oh, I forgot. You've got that garden. Oh, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. And we've oh. got citrus galore. So we're making fresh juices. And so. You know, you know how I feel about juices. I know. It's very high in sugar. We don't do a lot. But my dad with his diabetes, he needs it for his low blood sugars. But you know what I'd prefer you do for them? Do a whole juice. So instead of juicing it and pressing and just throwing out all the nutrients, just for, if it's an orange, for example, what what or whatever it is, throw it in the blender and make a blended drink for him. With the peel? No. Well, an apple peel, yeah, but not an orange peel. Oh, okay. Oh. So you put then, you put the whole orange with the seeds and everything in a blender? Yeah. And just make that? Yeah. We make it for our kids every day. So uh, we take a, a pomelo and uh, a we couple have pomelos of caracara too. oranges. Perfect. A pomelo, a couple of caracara oranges. We take the skin off them. We drop them in the blender with two ice cubes and we blend it and they have the most delicious orange drink ever. And it has all the nutrients that mother nature wanted that orange to have. Ooh. Okay. I'm going to start doing that. You're right. Because it has the fiber too. It has a lot of fiber. And what's cool mm -hmm. about it is if we make extra and then I drink it later in the day or I drink it the next morning, it thickens up so much because all of that natural fiber is still there and you can, you know it, you realize that. Whereas juice, it's just sugar water with hardly any nutrients. And as soon as you juice it, there were some studies at a UCLA that shows that, for example, the vitamin C in orange juice, for every minute that you wait to drink it after you juice it, it loses an extra 6% of vitamin C bioavailability. So wow. if you wait an hour, there's hardly any bioavailable useful vitamin C. Wow. Okay. So, so to be clear, you know, in your magic bullet or whatever blending smoothie unit you have, you just throw the orange in and then just yeah, drink take that the skin off, drop the orange in. And I like to put a couple ice cubes to make it cool. Okay. If you want to put ginger in it and do an orange ginger one, how great is that? Um, if you want to be creative and add other things, you do you still have pomegranates on your property? I don't. We got rid of the pomegranates. Oh, I know. Oh, it was oh. becoming scary. People were like climbing our trees and yeah. Wait, you guys saw me? <laughs> <laughs> but we have pomelos, tangerines, mandarins, blood orange, um, tangelos. So, so there you go. Take a mix of those, take the skin off, throw it in with a couple ice cubes and it'll be even better for your dad's blood sugar. Yeah, because, because you're not it, just him, it won't yeah. spike as much, right? It'll exactly. It'll be released slowly. I love yeah. that. Oh my God, I'm gonna do that. So that was the other positive from this for with us is I've been home with my dad and from six feet away, I've been able to help kind of see where he's been going wrong with his blood sugar levels. Like his sugar will go low and he'll drink juice. Well then it spikes up and then it crashes again. I'm like, Dad, no. Maybe a little bit of juice if it's low, but you need to have some protein, some fat, and some carbs to maybe to give yourself something to sustain you. Exactly. Yep. So yeah, he needs the protein, carbohydrate, and we, um, you know, look, your dad is different. He's type one. Correct? One, yeah. Yeah. So for him, the glycemic index of a food is not as important as it is for a type two. For a type two, you can control it a lot more through diet manipulation and exercise. Your dad can do it, but he manipulates it also largely through injecting insulin. Yeah. Whereas a type two doesn't do that. So um, for the 30 million type twos out there and the 100 plus million 
almost type twos out there. It's really about cutting back on your sugar. Really, 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 really. And, and honestly, um, I don't know if we have much left, but if you go to sweetkick.com and you do a two week sugar reset, now's the time to do your two, two, two week sugar reset. So maybe when the quarantine's done, you have kicked your sugar addiction. You've taken back control of your relationship with sugar and you can focus on eating the foods that are more nutritious for you. The, the great recipes you've learned to cook during this time at home and use this as a time of bettering yourself. This is not a bad thing. This is, this is a bad thing if you die from coronavirus, but for everyone else, this is a, a great opportunity to make yourself healthier, more fulfilled and learn a new skill. I love it. I love it. Harley Pasternak. Like I love you. You too. We need to have a, a FaceTime like party night with Jess and Kevin. Oh, I love it, right? <laughs> Meanwhile, by it. the time the day is over, we've been dead tired. I don't know how you guys have been, but I feel like there's there's so much going on now because we're home and we're in the middle of everybody else's lives more than we ever were that we're yeah. like, huh. And I'm sure you guys having to deal with the kids and teaching them and all of that. It's been a lot too. How how was it? Real real moment? Real moment. Yeah. I don't know how to use tools. I just I've grown up in a world where I didn't need to use tools. Three times in the last three days, I've used tools. <laughs> I fixed things where otherwise I would have called someone to help us fix it. Uh huh. I feel so empowered, and I'm not even joking. Mm -hmm. I feel so empowered that all of a sudden, wow, okay, if things really went on for a long time, I could fix stuff. Harley, and I love yeah, it. I'm going to share true. a picture with you right now that you're not even going to believe. So, my couch in the kitchen, like family room area has yeah. been broken. The middle seat has been, you know, sticking out for, um, I don't know, two months at least. I'm texting you a photo and okay. the part came in the mail and they're like, Oh, it's so easy. We'll send you the part and you can fix it. Well, the part comes and now we're trying to fix it. I'm under the couch like a mechanic is under a car. Oh, no. Trying way. to do this. We're jacking up the sides with like pieces of wood to get it to go higher because I need to unzip this thing and unzip tie all these wires because they're all reclining units. And I'm sitting under there and I'm like, I can't believe I'm doing this. This is not something I would ever be doing. Right. But I didn't actually accomplish it because it was, it, we couldn't get the couch high enough for me to really see where everything was wired to. So I could only get a small section of it. Um, so now I'm going to have to have somebody come deal with it, but yeah, no, we're doing the same thing. Everybody's, you know, figuring it out and, and it is empowering to see how little we really need, right? Like yep. we, in, in general, you know, I've been cleaning and organizing and I'm like, God, there's so much excess and we don't even know what we have. Sometimes you're buying the same shit over and over cause you didn't know you had it. And so I'm taking the time to kind of get everything in order so that when we come out of this, we come out of it better. And that's all we can do. Right. Yeah. I mean, everybody's going to be hit in a different way by this. Um, some worse than others, but all of us can try to be better through it. Absolutely. Yep. Amen. All right. Let me know what you think of my photo. Hold on. Let me see. Let me. Okay. Let's see. <laughs> Maria. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Look I, at you like a mechanic. I was like, take this. Kevin's never going to believe it. <laughs> You're like a mechanic. Yeah. That's too funny. So anyhow, um, well, thank you so much for joining. I always love talking to you and you too. Um, I always love our conversations and now everybody just got to share in on one of our conversations. And, um, and I love that you're sharing all of these amazing recipes and workouts with everybody at Harley Pasternak guys, we're going to put everything in the summary of this show so you can just click and go. And, um, and I'm, I'm going to get my Fitbit set back up. I'm so excited that you reminded me of that because I have been feeling like a little tub of when shit you, over here. Just not when, doing when you, when you do send me a link and let's do a little challenge, a little Fitbit challenge. Okay. Okay. I mean, you know, I used to do it with my friends and I would wait for them to go to sleep and I would run my ass off in the middle of the night to beat them. <laughs> I love that. You're too hard to that. beat. We've tried to do this before. You're really tough to Good beat. Good luck. <laughs> it's Good on luck. Harley Pasternak. You know me. I'm competitive. 
<laughs> I'll hustle. <laughs> All right, good. All right. Well, love you. My love to you Jess too. and the kids. And you thank too. you so much. And stay good. Okay, take care. All right. So friggin' funny. I have tried to beat Char a Harley before in a Fitbit challenge. It is like almost impossible. Well, I mean, this is a normal day for him and he's already going to get 12,000 steps. Like in a challenge mode, he's probably, he's probably like you with a Patri being a Patriots fan. He probably goes out and gets 40,000, 50,000 and just knocks you out of the park. You know who the biggest Fitbit challenge person is? Joe Gear. Real? Oh, Joe Gear killed it. You cannot beat Joe Gear. You cannot beat him. He lost so, so much weight using the using the steps. Yeah, and so I I I actually I'll tell you he's the story that I'm I'm talking about. So I could never beat the motherfucker. <laughs> I could never beat him. And so he lives. Um, well, at the time he was living on the East Coast, and um, he still does actually. And so I I waited till he went to sleep, and I ran full speed for like ever. Just, and I mean, I needed to like beat him by thousands just in case he woke up because I know him, if he woke up and he saw that and was alerted, he would, he would then beat me when I was asleep. Oh my God. We laughed. I'm still laughing and it's been years still laughing. You were, you were running? <laughs> when I say running faster than I've ever run in my life for like a solid hour, just to beat him. But like it's steps. It's, it doesn't. You don't have to run. You just have to power walk. If you need to beat him by a lot, you've got to run okay. full speed. This motherfucker gets like fifty thousand steps. Oh my god! How do you beat that person? And then the time difference. Anyway, you could just walk around with the treadmill underneath you. <laughs> just do all your work on your Peloton. Anyway, uh, but that is a great tip. It's actually great to remember. I got to pull mine out as soon as the show is done. I'm going to pull it out and I'm going to start. Um, making sure I'm getting my steps and that will make a difference because you have to do a little bit of both, right? Like I've written the every girl's guide to diet and fitness. I've written the every girl's guide to cooking. Um, I know most of it is what we put in. That makes the biggest difference, right? Is mm -hmm. what we put in, but you also, <laughs> you got to put out. So you gotta, you gotta move and you don't have to do a lot, but as long as you're getting those 12,000 steps, like Carly said, you don't have to run. You don't have to do weightlifting. You don't have to do any of that. Just get your 12,000 steps, 10 to 12,000 steps, and you're good. Um, then you're, you're, you're safe. Got it. I'm going to so. have to try to go on some more walks during this. Mm. Yeah. Or, I mean, you have the elliptical there. You can be working on an iPad with the elliptical. I'll try. Yeah. I'll try. That's what I do. Sometimes when I'm too busy, I'll be on the Peloton and I'll just, you know, use my phone. And what if I just steal your Peloton? No. What if I just walk back to your gym and cough on the Peloton? That is my and then I can just have it. best gift ever. You're never going to touch it again. Ugh, I love my Peloton. <laughs> it's the best. I just love, you know what I love about it? I just love that someone's walking me through a session. Yeah. So I don't have to think of what I'm doing. And by the time they're done talking, it's almost like, they talk, 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 then you're done. And you're like, oh, cool. It's over. And they're, you know, positive, shiny, happy people. Good music. <laughs> yeah. So, I really, I really need to get back to working out. Like it's, it's been so, such a difficult transition. You period. have to do it immediately, Steven. I'm telling you like half an hour before you have to be here, just get up, move for 20 minutes, or even just get yourself on there for 10 and keep building because then you'll get addicted to the high again of how you were feeling. Well, like right now, my schedule is um, I wake up at 945, get dressed, drive over here, do the show, get back, work until about 1230 or one, mm -hmm. chill out for 30 minutes and go to sleep, wake up at 945. Mm -hmm. So I'm, it's like I'm getting eight hours between 145 and 945 and anything that I cut out of that, like I'd have to stop working in the middle of the day and go for a workout. Mm -hmm. So I'm like trying to figure out how to fit it in mm -hmm. because right now it's sun up to sun down. But I think as we start getting more into a routine, I'll figure it out. Yeah. I, there's always time. We just aren't being as efficient with our time. We have to really look at the holes a little bit more. So it's like, even if you did 20 minutes at nine 15 yeah. and then showered and came and then later in the day, you take a 10 minute walk. Everybody can leave for 10 minutes. Like it's possible. It's just, you've got it in your head that you can't, you can totally can. I know. So. I just, I just like getting shit done. I know, but yeah, you're not going to feel good 
True. If you turn into the elephant from the giraffe. I could become a meme, though. <laughs> My friend literally sent me that meme today. Anyway, um, thank you guys for joining us. I hope that that was helpful. I learned so much, by the way. Um, and do we have anything in the chat that we need to get to? I forgot to even go to the chat. Well, we do have a question, but um, it's not... I didn't really want to bring it up because we kind of covered it. A lot of the chat questions you covered naturally, which okay. I thought was really powerful. That's my job, people. We did have a lot of great people in the chat, though. The Steamer, uh, Brandy Lee. Uh, everyone's pretty worried right now because everyone has family that's sick and everyone has family that's, like, high risk. So I think really, like, a lot of the discussion right now is, like, how people are trying to still go about their lives without yeah. putting them at risk, which yeah. is kind of the, the, the going theme right now. Yeah, which I was enlightened with an idea this morning, so I'm going to finish the show, and I'm going to try to put that into action, and that will help us in that. Um, so that's the show for today. Thank you guys for joining us. Um, if you want to become a Patreon member, we are still trying to migrate everybody over to Patreon. Um, the summary, the link is in the summary. You can just click on that. If you love the show, share it with people especially any of the episodes that we've been doing lately that people will benefit from, um, please share. We've had amazing shows before this that you should be going into the library for with, you know, Andy Puttycomb on um, meditation and so, so many amazing episodes. So take advantage of uh, these great conversations with these incredible healers and experts um, at this time. And, and like I said, share it, rate, comment, subscribe, Tell a friend. Um, we're so grateful for your support. In the meantime, follow us at Maria Menunos, at Harley Pasternak, and at Stephen Lemieux Photo. And remember, be nice people, make good choices, and be present. Mm -hmm.